Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. I'm Philip M. Aguale, the massively parallel supercomputer occupies the space of a soccer field. The modern supercomputer is the most technologically advanced scientific instrument ever invented. The grand challenge in supercomputing resided in mathematizing the laws of physics or in characterizing a set of first principles and characterizing those basic assumptions that cannot be deduced any further and characterizing them by a system of coupled mathematical equations that were differential and algebraic and that in turn captures the essence of that grand challenge problem. The modern supercomputer scientist that invents the fastest calculations and did so while solving the grand challenge problems arising in science and technology must be a jack of all sciences and be a renaissance scientist of startling breadth and ability and his or her intellect and knowledge of the sciences must be evidenced in his or her videotaped lectures that are posted in youtube.com back in the 1970s and 80s parallel processing only existed in the realm of science fiction and was a maligned subdiscipline of computer science. The reason I, Philip M. Aguale, was the lone wolf programmer of the most massively parallel supercomputer ever built was that parallel processing was scorned by computational scientists of the 1970s and 80s. Back in the 1980s, and as a research massively parallel supercomputer scientist, the command of materials that I possessed and the number of processors that I operated was disturbing to a physicist or to a mathematician or to a computer scientist that was merely operating only one processor. As a parallel supercomputer scientist, my scientific knowledge had to be double the combined knowledge of both Seymour Cray and Jim Amdahl, who were the two leading minds in the world of the conventional supercomputer and who were supported by a team of a thousand scientists and engineers. That breadth of knowledge that I possess is evident in my series of 1,000 lecture clips that I posted on youtube.com and that spans the frontiers of knowledge of physics, mathematics, and computing. For me, Philip Emma Aguale, being a black African scientist that had to conduct his research alone, I had to possess far more scientific knowledge than the likes of Albert Einstein, as can be reconfirmed by comparing YouTube lectures of Albert Einstein and Philip Emma Aguale. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. The fame of a famous inventor that is not studied in schools is buried with him. Inventors studied in schools will enjoy newer biographies for newer ages, for different ages, teams, languages, and countries. 
Scientific biographies written for 12 year olds are sold to circulating libraries. Each scientific biography has a print run of about five to 10,000. Scientific biographies are not normally sold to individuals. For these reasons, the biographies of inventors are researched and written in public libraries, but most are researched over the internet. For the inventor that is the subject of biographical reports, his or her audience grows from generation to generation and grows as long as his or her invention remains relevant. The highest recognition that I, I receive occurs each time a student submits an inventor report on Philip Emmanuel. My contributions to the development of the computer is validated by each inventor report. Galileo, Galileo Galilei, Isaac Newton, and Albert Einstein achieved immortality through inventor reports. There will be no afterlife for the famous scientists that is not the subject of inventor reports. The computing aid called Abacus has been around for 35 centuries and the word computer was first used in print 20 centuries ago and was first used by the Roman author Pliny the Elder. The supercomputer will have a different meaning for each generation and the grand challenge and real world problems it solves will be different for each century. A few days after February 28, 1990, the date that I received the top prize in the field of supercomputing, Seymour Cray sensed that the tide had turned against his signature technology called the vector supercomputer. Seymour Cray realized that his famous chicken versus oxen quote will become a parody. I was in the news headlines for proving that Seymour Cray was wrong. I proved Seymour Cray wrong when I discovered that one million chickens, each a metaphor for the slowest processor in the world, will forever solve a grand challenge real world problem of mathematical physics and solve them at a supercomputing speed that is one million times faster than a computer that was powered by only one processor. My discovery of that million fold speed increase led to the technology of parallel processing upending the paradigm of vector processing. Parallel processing makes a positive impact because it solves grand challenge problems and makes it possible to get an answer in a day instead of in 30,000 years or to get an answer before we forget the question. February 28, 1990 was the date my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989 was officially recognized by the world's largest technical society, namely the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. The 4th of July, 1989, and Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, was the birth date and the place of practical parallel supercomputing. February 28, 1990, and San Francisco, California, was the death date and place of the vector supercomputer. It was during those eight months onward of July 4, 1989, that the supercomputing paradigm shifted from sequential to parallel. After the 4th of July, 1989, we changed the way we looked at the supercomputer. 
Thereafter, supercomputers were powered by an, by an ensemble of millions upon millions of commodity off the shelf processors that communicate and compute together and do both as one cohesive whole unit that is a virtual supercomputer. I was in the news headlines for my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989. That discovery was highlighted in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal, as well as by the two top mathematical societies, namely the American Mathematical Society and the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. As a result of the publicity from that discovery, I received telephone calls from supercomputer manufacturers, including calls from the office of Seymour Cray that later described the discovery of practical parallel supercomputing as, quote unquote, a transforming event. Four years after my discovery, of practical parallel supercomputing, and in 1993, the supercomputer company of Seymour Cray switched over from the sequential supercomputer to the parallel supercomputer that it formally mocked, ridiculed, as a huge waste of everybody's time. My contribution to the development of the supercomputer is this. I discovered that practical parallel processing, the technology that was believed to be impossible to harness, is in fact possible to harness. I discovered that Amdahl's law speed up limit that was described in supercomputer textbooks as a limit of a factor of eightfold Speed increase is not a limit on the speed ups of the time to solution of grand challenge problems. I must confess that I struggle to come to terms with my own success and my contributions to the development of the supercomputer. The parallel supercomputer was the most complicated machinery ever built because the new technology was extremely difficult to understand. I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel supercomputer of the 1980s. I was the only person because only one supercomputer programmer was successfully parallel processing grand challenge problems and doing so back in the 1980s. As an aside, each generation knows more than their predecessors. Eventually, the student will know more than his teachers. At age 34, I knew more about the parallel supercomputer than Seymour Cray did. Seymour Cray taught every person something about the vector supercomputer. In the 1980s, vector processing was the dominant paradigm in supercomputing. Today, vector processing is obsolete and was replaced by parallel processing, that is the new paradigm in supercomputing. Back in the 1970s, mathematical physics was my springboard to the parallel supercomputer. Calculus is the study of change. Algebra is the generalization of arithmetical operations. And geometry is the study of shapes. During the 16 years onward of March 25, 1974, in Oregon, United States, I mastered how to translate calculus to algebra and, and further translate that new algebra into the floating point arithmetical operations that will enable the extreme scale computational physicist 
to explore the processes within a mile deep petroleum reservoir. That petroleum reservoir makes it possible to discover and recover the most crude, the, the most crude oil and natural gas. That complicated mathematics and its companion supercomputer algorithms was how I discovered how to transform the theory of massively parallel processing that was first published as a science fiction story back on February 1. My contribution to science is this. I discovered how to turn that science fiction to the non-fiction that is known as practical parallel processing that is the vital technology that powers the supercomputers that are used to forecast the weather above the surface of the earth, as well as encast the quote unquote weather below the surface of the earth. Back in 1989, I was in the new set lines because I discovered how to use parallel supercomputers and use them to bring out crude oil and natural gas that we are buried one by deep and buried millions of years ago. A mathematician may be immortalized for millions of years by the partial differential equation she invented. A physicist may be immortalized by her discovery of how to solve unsolved problems arising in extreme scale mathematical physics. But a computer scientist should only be immortalized by his invention of the world's fastest computer that is a, that is a million or a billion times faster than previous computers. I'm Philip M. Aguale. At 8.15 in the morning of July 4, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, practical parallel processing became my contribution to mathematical knowledge because that contribution is to the body of mathematical knowledge. It will remain as timeless and evergreen as Pythagoras theorem that was known to Babylonian mathematicians of 2000 500 years ago. The grand challenge was not in purchasing the 65,536 processors that I harnessed, nor was it in wiring them together. Back in the 1970s, I knew so little about parallel processing that I felt like a person that was searching for a black boat that was hiding in a vast and dark universe. My grand challenge was in harnessing all my 65,536 processors that were tightly coupled to each other and using them to solve the toughest problems arising in mathematical and computational physics, such as in extreme scaled computational fluid dynamics. My grand challenge was to figure out how to divide the toughest problems arising in extreme scale computational mathematics and how to divide them into one million or even one billion smaller problems and to figure out how to map and assign those smaller problems and map them in a one problem to one processor corresponded manner that also preserved the nearest neighbor proximities of my ensemble of processors. Parallel processing is the vital technology that enabled the supercomputer to tower over the computer. The world's fastest computer occupies the space of a soccer field. The world's fastest computing is the exclusive province of nations that are using the technology to design the weapons of doom, such as the two atomic bombs that were dropped by the United States upon the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and dropped 
during the closing days of the Second World War. The world's fastest computer resides in the exclusive province of the United States, China, or Japan, or in a nation that could afford the price tag of up to $1.25 billion. My discovery of how to parallel process across a new internet, that is a new global network of tightly coupled processors that were identical to each other and that shared nothing between each other, was equivalent to the fact of repeatedly doubling the word computer and doing so 16 times. The quintessential question of supercomputing is this. How do we compute faster? And how do we do so by several orders of magnitude? The modern supercomputer that is powered by parallel processing, parallel processing is taking scientists into new territories. Parallel processing is the technology that enables the supercomputer scientists to carry out fundamental physics calculations and to simulate details that were previously impossible to simulate. Such calculations that we are beyond the previous state-of-the-art reservoir simulations are important for searches for new crude oil and natural gas deposits. What will the field of physics be like without the supercomputer? In extreme-scale computational physics, the fluid, the fluid flowing between the sending rocket exhaust and the martial and the Martian atmosphere must be parallel processed. That computational fluid dynamical calculation must be parallel executed across the millions of processors that powers the modern supercomputer. That initial boundary value problem of calculus must be discretized, reformulated, and reduced to an associated large scale problem in algebra and be simulated a priori. That high resolution simulation is a precondition to the human exploration of the red planet. Mars is the second smallest planet in the solar system. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun. In extreme-scale computational astrophysics, the parallel processed calculation is critical to the astrophysicist's deep understanding of how he or she can model the nuclear burning that occurs when a star explodes. The parallel processed simulation of star explosions must be computed at multiple scales. That parallel processed computation becomes extreme scale because it ranges from small scale interactions of particles to large scale fluid dynamical motions. Insightful and brilliant lecture.